Okay, here's the Contixo F18. Here's the carrying bag. And inside we have the drone. So take a look. This is a GPS enabled drone that has four brushless motors with independent ESCs. There's the battery compartment with the XT30 connector. Here's the 2S LiPo battery. Now underneath the first layer of foam here, we have the transmitter. The cell phone mount. And two sets of props. For setting up the cell phone mount for the transmitter, what you're gonna do is take the mount and it's a ball joint, so you're just gonna snap it together. And then on the transmitter itself, you're gonna go ahead and slide that on and the back snaps into place. There's a little spring-loaded release there. And that's your phone mount. Okay, next what we wanna do before taking off is install the props. So you'll notice on the props there is a marker that says the letter A and then there's a letter B. So on the arm, you're gonna find the same marking. These motors are keyed as well as the props. So you're just gonna slide that on, turn it till you can push it down. And then you have a rubber washer. Now you'll notice with these prop nuts, one is indented and one is not. The reason for that is the indented prop nut is counterclockwise thread. Now the reason for that is the A motors spin in different directions than the B motors. So when they're spinning, they're actually gonna be self-locking. So you have no worries about the, uh, the props falling off because the nuts are actually tightening. So we'll go ahead and get these all installed. All right, so we have the props all installed now. Uh, one thing we wanna make sure we do before we take flight is this tool down here that looks like a pair of tweezers is actually a wrench used to tighten the, the prop nuts. You wanna make sure you give it a little extra uh, tightening there before taking off. So we'll go ahead and tighten all those up. So the first time powering on the drone, what you're gonna to need to do is bind the drone with the transmitter. So to do that, you're gonna hold down the red lock unlock button. And while you're holding that, power on the transmitter, you'll see a blinking LED there. While that is blinking, you're gonna plug the battery into the drone. You'll hear a beep on the transmitter, which means it successfully connected. And you are now bound. You won't have to do that again. That's not required every time you power on the drone. Taking a look at the transmitter, the LCD screen has some information that is very useful. We have the transmitter, which is the radio's battery power, the receiver, which is the drone battery power, uh, the GPS satellites available, which right now it has none because we have to calibrate that, the height of the drone, distance, and the signal strength. So now with the drone powered on, we're gonna go ahead and walk through connecting it to the app being used for FPV. So on my iPhone here, I'll go into settings and I should see Contixo available, I'll click on that. And now with it being connected to that, I'll go back and launch the Contixo F18 app. And now we have the option to start and you can see we have an FPV feed. So we're gonna go ahead and take off and see how it flies. One very important thing to take note of before taking off is you'll see here that there's zero GPS satellites locked in. And the reason for that is we did not calibrate the GPS on the drone yet. You'll notice on the bottom here, there's blinking LEDs. Uh, so what we need to do to calibrate is first in the horizontal position, we'll go ahead and rotate the drone three times, 360 degrees. This is required each time you're powering on the drone prior to flight, but what it's doing is it's 
calibrating the GPS so it can pick up the satellites and be more accurate for the, um, the return to home feature. So now I have a different pattern of blinking lights. I'll go ahead and rotate vertically with the camera facing down three times, 360 degrees, until I see a solid light pattern. So now we're ready to take off. All right, so we have 11 satellites connected and we need a minimum of seven in order to use the return to home feature. So with the 11 connected, well now 12, we know that uh, we can rely on that coming back to the takeoff point. So uh, I have GPS off right now. The reason for that is uh, I'm gonna do a hover without it and then switch over to see what the difference is there with the hover and altitude hold. So to take off, what we're gonna do is press this unlock button and that's going to spin up the motors and then from there we have two options. We can either throttle up to take off or we can use the auto takeoff land button. So we'll go ahead and do that now. And there's the motors and then we'll take off. So here we have the drone hovering and it's drifting away. And part of that is due to the GPS not being turned on. So what we're gonna do is we'll turn on the GPS and see if we can get it to stay in one place. It's a little wet out there, so I don't feel like walking that far. So the GPS is on, I'm gonna bring it back towards me so we can take a closer look at it. So here we have the drone doing a hover with GPS enabled. And you can see it's nice and steady. Doing a really good job of staying in place. We'll go ahead and take some flight and see how it does. And then we'll try the return to home and see how accurate that is. So let's go ahead and take off. Okay, so now that I'm in the air, I wanna start recording some footage on the HD camera. So how I'm gonna do that is a single press, you'll see we'll take a picture, and a long hold, we'll start recording. You'll see that icon blinking there. So now that I'm recording, I'm gonna go ahead and um, fly around a little bit, see what footage we can get, and then try returning back to home and see how that does. So one of the benefits of having the five gigahertz Wi-Fi connection for FPV is you're gonna get a lot longer range than you would with a standard uh, 2.4 gigahertz connection. And that's what you see in most drones with this type of Wi-Fi feature. So right now I'm pretty far out. It says I am 185. So I'm still getting excellent FPV footage on my screen here. I'll show you that there so that's pretty good for where i'm at i'm just starting to break up with the fpv i can no longer see the drone line of sight unless I look really hard. I don't know because I've been flying through. Oh, there it is, the camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn around. If I can get my orientation straight, start coming back, which I hope is this way. So with losing the FPV, I'm not sure There we go, I think I'm coming back. I 
Okay, so here I come back into range. My battery indicator's saying that it's getting low. So one thing I really like about this drone is how quick it moves. Now, that's not necessarily a thing for footage. It's more, I knew I was far away and I wanted to get back quick. Now, especially with the battery dying, I could rely on those brushless motors to get back nice and fast. Okay, so now that we're running low on battery, I'm gonna go ahead and try the return to home feature. All I'm gonna do to enable that is press the button and that's gonna initiate return to home. We'll see how it does. I made it very challenging to bring it back exactly where it was because I took off from this. So I am giving no input whatsoever. Pretty close to my truck, so we'll hope for the best there. But we'll go ahead and see how it does. So you can see it's hovering over head right now. And I'm giving no input whatsoever. Coming down. So overall it did a really good job. I didn't expect it to land on the bag because that would be very impressive, but it's pretty close. So I am impressed uh, with that return to home functionality.